Hallelujah. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Praise God. Good afternoon, world. Happy to see everybody. And we're just glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. It is time for the Word of God this afternoon. And we're going to be talking this afternoon on the subject matter of walking in relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Walking in relationship with God. Okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to have a brief word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for just moving by your spirit, Lord God, healing, delivering, and setting free. Lord God, we thank you for just doing a great work in Jesus' name, Lord God. Edify, Lord. Save, deliver, heal, and set free. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we're talking about walking in relationship with God. Excuse me. Walking in with relationship with God. That's what we're talking about this afternoon. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Going With Purpose Ministries, by the way. <laughs> but we're talking about walking in relationship with God. Amen. Amen. It is so. See, we have a God who is our heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's the, um, my first thought, as a matter of fact, is... First, we must realize, and my first thought or point is, first, we must realize he's our heavenly father and what that really means. Amen? Amen. He is our heavenly father. That's my first point. Uh, he's my first thought is that he is our heavenly father. Amen? Amen? If we're going to walk in relationship with God, we have to first of all realize that he is our heavenly father. Amen? When Jesus said the model prayer, what we all, what, what many call the Lord's prayer, he didn't say our, he didn't say my father which art in heaven. He said our father which art in heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? He is our father. He, that means that he included all of us. Amen? Because he knew that we were his children. The Bible the scripture also says, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not appear what we shall be, but we know when he appears that we shall be like him. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, for as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen? Amen. So the Lord, we are his children. Amen? The sheep of his pasture, the Bible also says. We, he is our heavenly father. Amen? A lot of people have problems with that. See, Christianity is not so much a religion. The world considers Christianity a religion. But really, Christianity is a vital, intimate relationship with God Amen. through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? It's a relationship with our Heavenly Father through Christ. Amen? Through the finished work of Jesus Christ, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That's what Christianity is about. Amen. Relationship. Amen. This is one of my favorite subjects. It's relationship. It is so important for us to know that we don't serve a robot God. He's not a robot. He's not somewhere in, in space and, and throwing lightning bolts every time we get it wrong, every time we mess up, every time we miss it. Amen. But we serve, and I don't want to get ahead of myself because i got some more points here. But anyway, we serve a loving, heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. A loving, heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. That's, what, that's who we serve. Amen? We have to get this as children of God in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. We have to get the fact that he's a personal God. Amen. Amen. He says that all of the hairs on your head, he didn't say they were counted. He said that they, they were numbered. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we serve a God that loves us so much that he didn't just count the hairs, but he's, such, he's so personal that he numbered every one. Hallelujah. He knows about hair number 483. Mm -hmm. Amen. He knows about hair number 108. Amen. Now, if God thinks of us, he thinks enough of us to number our hairs on our head, how much more does he care about what we go through on a daily basis? Amen? Amen. Amen. He cares about us 
intimately. Amen. He cares Amen. about us personally. Amen. He knows everything there is to know about you. Amen. And his thoughts, the Bible said, are more than the grains of sand on the seashores toward us and what we're dealing with. Amen. 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 And we have to know that about our Heavenly Father. Amen. We got to know this about our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Now my next thought is we must know and believe that he's the God of the Bible and be willing to live by his word. Amen. Amen. We must know and believe that he is the God of the Bible and to be willing to live by his word. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. Hallelujah. We want to look at 2 Timothy 3.16. We must know and believe. It's important to not just know, but we must believe. We must know and believe. Okay? We Amen. must know and believe that he, he's the God of the Bible and be willing to live by his word. 2 Timothy 3.16 says this in the New Living Translation. I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. It says all scripture is inspired. Excuse me. <coughs> it says all scripture is inspired by God and is useful. To teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Amen? Amen. It corrects us when we are wrong. Amen? Amen? Amen. Thank you. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Amen? Amen. I'm going to read that again. It said, and it says song, but it says all scripture is inspired or God breathed. Amen. That's Amen. what that word in the Greek, you know, King James said all scripture was given by inspiration of God. Mm -hmm. It means it was God breathed. Amen. Amen. God breathed on the men of God. And they were like puppets on the string. Amen. They weren't writing down their own opinions and thoughts, but they were possessed by the Holy Ghost. They were the Holy Ghost filled them. Amen. And they wrote, they were like puppets on the screen, and they were moving the hand according to the way the Spirit of God was leading them. Amen? Amen. So the Bible says, all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Amen? Amen. It says it corrects us when we are wrong. And teaches us to do what is right. Amen? Amen? So that's what the whole scripture. So we must know and believe that he's the God of the Bible. Amen. He is the God of the Holy Scriptures. We live by the word of God. The scriptures say the just shall live by faith. And faith in the word of God. Amen? Amen. Faith in the word of God. Now let's go to Matthew the fourth chapter. Quickly. We want to go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. And we want to look at how Jesus, what Jesus did when he was in the face of temptation. When he was, after he, I'm going to read exactly what happened in Matthew. And it's another account in Luke, the fourth chapter. But we're going to read Matthew, Matthew's account of Luke, of, um, of Jesus being tempted of the devil. Amen. Let's go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody feeling good today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, we're going to start with the very first verse of the fourth chapter. Amen? Amen. Is everybody ready? It says, then Jesus, in the New Living Translation again, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Amen. He was led by the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. To be tempted there by the devil. To for 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. Amen? Amen. Three. During that time the devil came and said to him. Focus real good on this. 
If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, no. The scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of from this Bible, the uh, New Living Translation said, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Amen? Amen. So when Jesus faced temptation, he used the word of God. Amen? Amen? He used the word of God when he was faced with temptation. And there are, many, there, are, there are probably about four or five more temptations that the devil brings his way. But I want to bring out the fact that God is the God of the Bible. That the word of God is so important that Jesus set the example that he, by living by the word of God. He lived by the word of God. Amen. He trusted the word of God. Amen. He led us by example. As leaders, we should lead by example. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But anyway, we must be, we must know and believe. We just can't know it, but we got to believe, right? We Amen. must believe that he's the God of the Bible. Amen. We got to believe the Bible. Amen. In other words, we got to believe, since he's the God of the Bible, we got to believe in his word. The word of God is God's word. Amen. So we got to believe in the God of the Bible's word, which is the very word of, of God. Amen. From Amen. Genesis to Revelation. We need to believe it. We got to believe. It's key as Christian people to believe for God so loved the world, right? Amen. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe it, there we go, believe it, everything starts with faith. Amen? Amen. Everything starts with faith. Amen? Mm. Amen. It's in the front, it's in the middle, and it's at the end. Faith. Amen? Amen? It's in the front, in the middle, and the end. Amen? Faith. The just shall live again by faith. Amen? So we must know and believe that he, he's the God of the Bible. That the word of God is his word. That's, it's not our opinion. It's not my thought. When I preach the word, I'm preaching God's word. Amen. It ain't about my opinion. That's right. My opinion don't matter. I'm telling you what thus says the Lord. I'm one of his mouthpieces. Amen. Amen. I am a, I'm one of his mouth. I speak for the Lord. I'm not here on my own. I ran from this. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be a preacher. I ran for more than two years from preaching the gospel. But so I am here in the name of the Lord. And representing him and preaching his word. And his word is that he is what? The God of the Bible. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Next point is, we must know and understand the importance of prayer. Amen. Amen. We must know, if we're going to walk in a relationship with God, we must know and understand the importance of prayer. Amen. 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 Scripture says men should always pray and not faint. Amen? Amen? It says we should always pray and not faint. It says, another scripture says, pray without ceasing. Amen? Amen. It says pray without. That means that we should always. It don't mean that you're supposed to be on your job and you're supposed to be working and you, you, know, well, you better leave me alone. I'm praying. I'm praying. No, that ain't what he's saying. You know, it means that we should maintain at all times always the spirit of prayer. Amen? We should always have the spirit of prayer. We should all, see our relationship is not just when we come to church mm. on Sunday mornings. Right. Not right. when you go to church on Wednesday for Bible study, and not just Friday night services, but our relationship is 24-7, 365. Or in the leap year, 366. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it's a daily, daily everyday relationship no matter what you and everything that we do we should do it through our relationship with God amen, amen. this is what I've learned by having a relationship with God I learned it from nobody else but relationship with God he told me that everything we do should be through his relationship our relationship with him when you on your job working it should be done through your relationship 
with Him when you're among your peers. Amen. Through your relationship with Him. Amen. Amen. When, when you're pumping gas. Hallelujah. Through your relationship with Him. Amen. 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 You don't put God on the shelf. You don't put the life of God on the shelf. Hallelujah. Amen. You live this life 24-7. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. We belong to God. We was bought. We were bought with a price. Amen. The precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Jesus paid a brutal price that we might be free. Amen. That we might be able to live. He died so we can live. Amen. Amen. So we ought to him to, to, to live the life. Amen? Amen. To live as he is, so are we in this world. Amen? Amen. Jesus was a prayer warrior. Amen? Amen? That's what Jesus did was pray. Jesus, he would rise up a long time before day. And he would pray. He always prayed. He prayed before miracles. He prayed doing miracles, signs and wonders, casting out devils. And he prayed afterwards. Amen. He prayed before, during, and afterwards. Amen? Amen. As he is, so are we in this world. Amen? Amen. As he is, so are we in this world. So we should um, take on those habits of prayer. Amen? Praying. Now, prayer, praise, and worship. They are like intertwined with one another. It's like you can't really pray without praise and worship. Amen? Amen. You can't really have a relationship with God without praise, prayer, and worship. They are intertwined with one another. Amen? Amen? As a matter of fact, the Bible says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen? Amen. So we don't want to approach God. Give me, let me, can you spell? No. Thank the Lord. I like to just thank. When I get before God, I don't, want, I don't like to ask him for anything. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Lord, for keeping me last night. Thank you, Lord, for loosing your angels all around my family and myself. We've been safe all night long. Thank you for the food you provide. Thank you for shelter, clothing. God, thank you for transportation. Thank you, Lord, I'm in my right mind. Thank you, Lord, for my relationship. Thank you, I got a wife that love me, children that love me, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We don't want to be asking God for everything yes. all the time. Amen. Amen. We're in a relationship. Amen. Amen. You don't ask your, your, you, you don't want to ask your spouse all the time. You know what you look like just every time you see your spouse, you're asking them for something. Mm. Amen. Amen. Always asking. Never giving, but asking. <laughs> you know, and I, you know, I can just imagine, you know, the Lord, he, you know, he, he might just be a little turned off. You know, we just always asking and never appreciating him, never thanking him. He's Amen. doing so much. He's doing more than we can see. He's doing all kinds of things behind the scenes, things that we don't even know about. He caused, he prevented accidents from happening. Amen. Even maybe today while we were driving, we might not even know it, but he protected us. Amen. Amen. He has prevented all type of things, and we need to give him praise and Amen. thanksgiving. Amen. I, I like Psalms 136. Amen. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, Hallelujah. for his mercy endure forever. Yeah. The whole chapter just about deals with just thanking God. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Let's look at that right quick, as a matter of fact. But we got to have praise, you know, prayer. Praise and worship are like intertwined. You don't want to get in thing and you get into no little rut where you just begging all the time. Mm -hmm. But you want a, a relationship required for us to give something. And that's praise. Amen. Worship. Amen. Praise God. So as we um, enter into his presence, we want to enter in with thanksgiving. Amen. And praise. Amen. This is how we relate to God. I'm trying to teach you all how we walk in relationship with God. We have to relate to God by giving Him what He wants. Mm -hmm. He wants thanksgiving and praise and worship. That's what He loves. Amen? But let's look right quick. This is how we want to, a lot of times we want to approach God with thanksgiving. 136, Psalms 136. Quickly, quickly. We're going to look at a few scriptures in Psalms 136. Amen. I just like it. I love it. It says, uh, 
in the New Living Translation, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love, hallelujah, his faithful love endures forever. Mm -hmm. Two, give thanks to the God of gods. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who alone does mighty miracles. What am I thanking him for? I'm thanking him because he's doing mighty miracles. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. I'm thanking him because he's doing mighty miracles. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavenly so skillfully. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who placed the earth among the waters. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavenly lights. His faithful love endures forever. He got all these beautiful stars. He got the sun. He has the moon. We got to give. You know if the moon wasn't there, we wouldn't be able to survive. If the sun wasn't in the sky, we could not live. We would all be dead. Amen. We need to give him thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For his love and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. We're in a relationship. In relationship, especially your relationship with God, you want to give thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, when you wake up in the morning, just thank him. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Don't ask him for nothing. That's just right. thank him for a while. Thank Hallelujah. You. Just thank him. Tell him how wonderful he is. Hallelujah. How great he is. Hallelujah. How awesome he is. Hallelujah. And that's what really moves God. That's, you know, and we got to love him back. He loves us. We need to love him back. Amen. Don't always be on the receiving end. Amen. We don't always want to be on the receiving end. We need to be on the giving end. Hallelujah. Amen. Give thanks. Give praise. Amen. Give adoration. Amen. Praise Lord. But and that's what we do. We communicate. Prayer is communion. It's communication. Amen. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when people pray, it's a monologue. It's a monologue. See, our relationship with God in prayer should be dialogue. Mm -hmm. Amen. I should say my little my little bit in English, and then I need to be quiet and listen. And you know, maybe the Lord might want to respond to what I have said. Right. I don't need to be talking to him for Two hours, and don't get him. You know how you how I look. I'm talking to my wife nonstop for two hours. That's annoying. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to her nonstop for two hours, and I don't even give her a chance to reply mm -hmm. to anything I have said. Amen. Mm -hmm. So when we pray to the Lord, we need to be. We need to have dialogue. Amen. Not Amen. monologue, but dialogue. Amen. Amen. You talk to him, and then listen. Amen. He said, my sheep, they know my voice, they hear me, and they follow me. Amen. A stranger, they will not follow. Amen. Amen. But how do I, how do I, now some people have challenges with the voice of the Lord. Now we will talk, years ago we will talk, that if you want to know the voice of God, you, you know the voice of God just like you know anybody else. Boy, if, if, I, if my wife called me, I don't be saying, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? If she called me on the phone, I already know. I know that's my wife. Mm -hmm. The reason being is because we spend quality time. We spend so much time together that I know what, I, it could be a crowd of people in here. And she says, I know that's her mm -hmm. because we spend a lot of time together. Mm -hmm. It's no different with our Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. When we spend quality time with our Heavenly Father, then we will know His voice. Beyond anybody else's, we're going to be 30 people in the room, and you'll be able to distinguish his voice from anybody else's voice. Now, he rarely speaks with an audible voice, you know. I think it might have been one time in my walk when I believe I heard an audible voice from God. Amen. I've been saved over 30 years. Amen. So, he, as far as I know, the Lord don't do a whole lot of audible speaking. But he speaks to our hearts and speaks to our minds. Amen. 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 And the more time you spend with him, the more and the clearer his voice will become to you. You will know his voice just like you know the closest person to you voice. Amen? Amen. If you spend a whole lot of quality time with him. Amen? Amen. So we got to spend quality time with God. Amen? Amen. Got to spend time in quiet. Sometimes just get quiet. Get somewhere and sit down and be quiet and know he's God. Amen. Respect Amen. him. Reverence him. Amen. 
Amen. Just listen. Now, sometimes God can, I mean, sometimes I'm doing a yard, man. I'm doing a yard. God be talking. I mean, he'll be talking to me more than he talking to me when I just be trying to just talk to him, doing nothing. Amen? Amen. As a matter of fact, a lot of times he talks to me when I'm active, you know, when I'm doing things. And he'll just speak to me, speak to my mind, and speak to my heart. Amen? Amen. As I just carry on my everyday life. God is not, you know, he's not limited to us and our ideas of how he should behave, <laughs> how he should do things. He, does, he is sovereign and he can do things any way he wants to. Amen? Amen. He can move when he want to move, how he want to move, where he want to move. He can say what he want to say, but he can do what he want to do. Right. So we cannot limit God to our human methods. Mm. Amen? Amen? We cannot limit God to our methodology. Amen? He can do what he want to do. Amen? But if we would just be open to him, amen? amen. He will guide us. I mean, we can, we've been making business transactions. or be at, You can be at the grocery store. And he'll tell you, he'll caution you about getting a, a particular product mm. or something. He'll Amen. say, don't do that. It's just all about your relationship. Right. Amen? Amen? It's all about your relationship. Amen? It's a communion. Mm. It's a communing thing. Amen? We commune with him. Mm. Hallelujah. But we have to be willing to. Amen? Amen? We have to be willing to commune with him. We have to be open to him. Amen. Amen. We have to be open. Hallelujah. We cannot limit him. We have to be open. Amen. 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 To him. Amen. Amen. We have to be open to him. We, we can't have our minds already made up with God. Okay, look here, God. Now, all this over here, all this is yours. Mm -hmm. This is yours right here. This is yours. But, oh, this over here, this is my stuff. You know, and I can't mix my stuff with your stuff. No. He has to be a part of our whole life. Amen. Amen. He wants to be a part of our whole everyday life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we must know and understand the importance of prayer. Let's look at some word. Look at some scripture. Amen. That's dealing with prayer. Amen. Scripture says, and he will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. Amen. Amen. It says he will be very gracious to thee in the voice of thy cry. It says when, when he shall hear it, he will answer thee. Amen. Amen. The Bible says when he hear the voice of our cry, he will answer us. Amen. Amen. We don't have to be just begging all the time. Lord, Lord. Because he, I don't know, I'm about to get ahead of myself. But the Lord, he hears us. Amen. Amen. Then it says, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, this is John, 1 John 5, 14 and 15, by the way. It says that this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, that's very important. When you ask, you must ask according to his will. Amen. Not our will, not our own way, but according to his will. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, just strike that dude down. Just strike him down, Lord. You know, if you ask him to strike somebody down, that's not according to his will. Right. Amen. So he's not going to honor foolishness. Amen. Amen. He's not going to honor foolishness. Amen. Amen. God, help me to steal this car. You know, he's not going to honor that prayer. Okay. Amen. He, it has to be according to to his will. Amen? Amen? So it says, if we ask, so when we relate in a relationship with God in prayer, we must ask according to his will. He heareth us. It said, now that tells me that if we don't ask according to his will, he don't necessarily be hearing it. He don't listen to it. That's true. Amen? Amen? Amen. He won't listen to you if you're not asking according to his will. He won't honor it. Then it says, he heareth us again. And if we know that he hears us, listen real good, listen real good. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Amen. 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 It says we know. If we know that he hears us, by faith, because it's all by faith. You got to believe that. You can't get around believing. That's 
right. You got to believe. Amen. Amen. So if you believe that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know, we know. That sounds like confidence to me. Mm. Hallelujah. If you know something, you got confidence right. in that thing. Amen. 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 So Amen. we know, we have confidence. We know that he hears us whatsoever. Okay. We know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Amen. Amen. We, know, we don't have to be just begging uh, uh, and crying. We, you don't have to fast every time you need something from God. That's right. If you walk in relationship with God, you know he hears That's you. Right. You Amen. will have dialogue like I just was talking about. You talk to him so much, you know he is with you. That's right. Because Amen. you experience him on a daily basis. You experience him continually. So he's not a stranger to you. You know he's with you and you know he cares and you know that he's working things out. And you know that there's a timetable. Amen. When in, in certain situations. You can't have everything right now. Hallelujah. Sometimes we got to wait. Sometimes he loves us so much that he won't allow us to have what we're asking for right now. Because he know that it would be to our detriment if we get it right now. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. Some Amen. things we have to mature into. Amen. Amen. Some things we're not mature enough to have to, to we can't bear the weight of it. That's right. The weight of it is too heavy for us to walk up on. Amen. 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 And so he loves us so much that he, he'll wait till we grow up and mature and get wiser. Amen. Amen. He'll wait till we, 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 we're more discerning. He'll wait till, till we're um, just, just have a little bit more sense about things. Amen. Amen. That's the kind of God we serve. He loves us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But it says, praise the Lord, it says, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then it says, that's St. John 16, 23 and 24 says, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. And that's a very important fact. That's a very important truth. Mm -hmm. He said, Whatsoever you, it's important that we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus Amen. says, I am the way. He didn't say Buddha was the way. He said, I am the way. The truth and the life. Amen. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Amen. Amen. So we got to do it according to his way of doing things. We can't do it our way of doing things. Amen. Amen. But it says, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. Amen. Amen. Those are directions. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got to learn how to follow directions. Amen. Amen. If we follow directions, we will get the results of, that the Lord has in store for us. Amen? Amen? It says, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hither 